babysitting for me when I was growing up. Like I would babysit, but it was all about the money. I was very grateful when I had my first kid that I actually really liked him because I didn't know, I was never really into other people's kids. So babysitting for me, there was no passion there. It was just, it was all about the money. Walker here and today we're going to be talking about how do you make the big decisions in your business. Those ones that you know they're a game changer, the ones that you kind of intuitively feel are going to make or break the business and the ones that you lay awake sleeping or not sleeping but thinking about at night and uh, maybe lose a little bit of sleep over and definitely spend some time on your knees praying for. How do you make those big decisions? So I think those big decisions are really critical in your business and I think that I've seen clients spend a really long time making them and what happens is sometimes the opportunity passes you by a little bit. You, um, because you weren't quick to move, the opportunity goes to somebody else or somebody else takes that idea and runs with it. So these big decisions that come our way, they really do need to be made pretty quickly. Um, but at the same time, we need to know that we're making the right call. So there's some questions that I always ask myself when I'm making the big ones. The first question that I ask myself is, I, I do a check-in to look at my priorities. Because there's so many different definitions of success. You know, for one person, success might look like high levels of personal visibility. For other people, it's going to look like having impact and influence. For other people, it might be time freedom. It could be financial freedom. It could be living and, and working in harmony with what your mission is in life. Maybe really mission driven. Um, success could be being able to have control over your life and not having to answer to anybody else. So it looks really different, that outcome. And in fact, when I'm working with clients, one of the first things I have them do is I have them do an assessment and we talk about what they value. So that way, if they start getting to those big decisions, I can remind them, hey, remember that these are the things that you value most. Is this in alignment with it? So if you haven't taken the time yet to really sit down and figure out what are your values, what's most important to you. So for me, I am impact and influence, and I am quality of life, and I am time. And those three things really matter to me. Personal visibility, I could, I'll, I'll do it because it gets me to those other three things, but it's not something that I personally seek after. Um, money is something that I know is critical and I know it's an important part of the game plan, but I will work harder for impact and influence than I will work for money any day of the week. And so if an opportunity comes my way and it sounds really great, but I actually go in and check in with my priorities, and really for me, it's a money grab. Like that's the only reason I would do it. That was babysitting for me when I was growing up. Like I would babysit, but it was all about the money. I was very grateful when I had my first kid that I actually really liked him because I didn't know, I was never really into other people's kids. So babysitting for me, there was no passion there. It was just, it was all about the money. And if those kind of opportunities come my way, probably not gonna be the best fit for my business overall. So have I looked in with my priorities? So the second question that I ask myself is, if this works, what's that gonna look like? If this is incredibly successful, is that gonna put me traveling on the road all the time? Because if so, that's not in alignment with my core values, because I'm lifestyle and I'm time and impact and influence, but I don't want to sacrifice the family time in pursuit of the impact and influence. So what will it grow into if it works extremely well? Is it going to require um, that I have a set time that I'm in my office every day and that I, I have to be there and other people are dependent on me? If so, that's actually okay with me. I don't mind, but you might mind, right? So you've got to figure out what your core values are, what really matters to you, and if this grows and it goes extremely well, 
What is that gonna look like? And is that still gonna be in harmony with your values? The next question that I asked myself is the exact opposite. So I went to the good side, if it works really well, what's that gonna look like? And then I go to the flip side and I look at it and say, okay, if it just flops and bombs, what's that gonna look like? Is it going to put my family on the street and make us homeless? Because that might be more than I'm willing to risk. Is it gonna be embarrassing and I'll be disappointed? I can do that risk, right? So I, I kind of look at that. What's the win if it goes really well? What will I lose if it doesn't go as well? And I do have to be willing to risk. I really do it. To win in business, you can't play it safe all the time. You've got to be willing to take some risks, and but you just wanna take calculated risks so that you can make sure that you're still preserving the things that are most important. The next question I ask myself is, am I excited about this? Does it make me happy? I will tell you, I made too many decisions in my early career based on, and by early career, I can even think of some like last year. So I made too many decisions just based on productivity, just based on, you know, I've got a family to provide for, I have responsibilities, what's going to work the best for everyone else in my world. And I made a lot of decisions based on that. And what I found was, I got burnt out and I lost the joy in the journey and I lost sight of what really makes me happy and what makes me excited to go to work and that matters. Let me just tell you, if you are not excited about what you're doing, it's hard to get other people to be excited about what you're doing. Whereas if you are loving life, then you're good to go. You're gonna be happy, you're going to be able to do well, you're gonna be able to love the creation process, you'll enjoy the work, even the work that's a little bit of drudgery. If this is something that you're excited about, that's going to make a difference. Now, do I pursue every single idea that I'm excited about it? Not really, I don't. Because I have a tendency to get really excited about new ideas, like, oh, that would be so fun. That would be so fun, that would be so fun. So I make sure that I test the idea, am I really excited about it or does it just sound fun? Because I do like to have fun in business. So what I'll do is I'll go down the path of an, a new idea a little bit. I'll actually sit there and map it out. And so I take it from that idea phase and I actually start to put in place the strategy. And I'll tell you, at least two or three times a year, I write out a strategic plan and then I look at it and say, you know what? It just sounded fun, but I truthfully am not really excited about doing the work. It matters, you signed up to be an entrepreneur and a business owner because you wanted to be passionate about what you do. So give yourself permission to actually do the work that you are passionate about. My last two strategies for you or two questions to ask yourself is, now we gotta go to does it look good on paper? Because there are some ideas that we get that sound really good and they sound really fun, but when we sit down and we map them out, it doesn't look good on paper. So a few years back, I actually, six years ago, I started an organization called A Celebration of Real Beauty, and I loved it. We produced community education events for uh, moms and their daughters to promote healthy body image and to, it was a women empowerment event. It was great, it was super fun, everybody loved it, but guess what wasn't awesome about it? It wasn't profitable. So I would spend six months getting ready to produce this event, and I had a broken business model the whole time because I was trying to price everything so low. So I was trying to run the biggest event in town on a low budget, uh, because I wanted to be able to make it accessible for moms and daughters. So that business actually kind of slowly died out, not because it wasn't a great idea, but because it didn't look good on paper. And I could have made different decisions. I could have priced things differently. I could have structured it differently, and that could have grown and it could have thrived, but I didn't. I just based it all off of emotions. Now. I didn't know then what I know today, so I'm not going to beat myself up over it. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna simply look at it and say, all new ideas, we're gonna make sure that they look good on paper. And if they don't with the first draft, we're gonna revise and we're gonna figure out how do we get this to look good on paper. And if it just never looks good on paper, it might be something that we just don't do or that I do on a small scale and I just do it under my umbrella of service. Just something that I'm doing because I want to be of service 
And that's okay. Not everything that we do has to be an explosive big business, but we do want to make sure that the things that we're pursuing are going to be profitable, that they're going to make sense, that they're going to work, and that you can actually make money doing it and that you're not going to be losing money doing it. I have started new things and realized a couple months in, oh, I'm losing money. It's not that fun. I've seen clients start new things because they thought it would sound fun and then they get in, so not making money. So we wanna make sure that it looks good on paper. My last tip for you is if you're going through and making a big decision, I pray about it. Now, if you're not a prayerful person, then you can meditate over it, but I think you need to take some time and you need to get out of your headspace. I think you need to get out of your emotional connection and you need some new inspiration and new ideas to just make sure that this is the right thing for you. I truthfully have had ideas that I am ready to push play on and when I go to prayer, it's like the whole thing just kind of melts away in my mind and it all of a sudden doesn't look as great as it did in my mind. And I've never regretted walking away from one of those ideas, even if I've taken it down the path just a little bit. Um, and that can be a good tip as well. Don't take it all the way down the path before you think to go to that meditation prayer space. Do it earlier on in the journey. Think it out enough that you've got a real clear idea and you actually know what you're seeking inspiration on, but then go to that place of inspiration so you can make sure that you are making the right decision for you. And you know what else? Don't judge other people's decisions and don't let other people send you judgment on yours. This is about is it the right decision for you, not is it the right decision for your best friend or for your neighbor or for your upline or for your business coach. This is about is it the right decision for you. There's no one size fits all definition of success and there's no one size fits all journey to success. So pick your journey and I hope this helps you to make some really good decisions and that you are just excited about that journey. So if you love the content here on the CEO Spot, make sure that you subscribe and then make sure that you share with your friends as well and join us on our Facebook community, The CEO Spot. We'd love to have you there and continue the conversation.